Corporate Democrats and lobbyists are panicking over Nina Turner's candidacy for Ohio's 11th district. She's running for that congressional seat and she is killing it in the polls. In fact, she at this moment has a pretty giant lead over everyone else who's running for that congressional seat. But on the same day that Hillary Clinton endorsed her opponent, Chantel Brown, lobbyists, as the Daily Poster reports, and a corporate aligned Democratic House coalition hosted a fundraiser to boost Brown. After a poll sponsored by Turner's campaign found her with a commanding 50 to 15 lead in the race, meaning she's bringing in 50% among likely voters. Chantel Brown is at 15%. So when Hillary Clinton endorsed Brown, that was her basically announcing to corporate lobbyists and corporate Democrats, hey, hey, over here, everyone, over here, we need to focus on this race. Cuz, you know, Nina Turner's doing well. She's associated with Bernie Sanders. She has policies that corporate Democrats don't like. So let's start pouring money into this race. And Golly gee, as Jake would say, it's exactly what they've started doing. So the fundraising invite says the host committee information for the event was protecting our vote federal PAC. The super PAC's treasurer is Marcus Mason, a corporate lobbyist who is also listed, who has also listed who is also listed as a host of the event. Mason's clients include Fox News parent company, Fox Corp. Private equity giant Carlisle Group, student loan servicer Navient, the National Alliance for Public Charter Schools, tech giant Google, and gig delivery company DoorDash. They're getting involved, guys. They gotta, they gotta defeat Nina Turner. That's what their focus is on now. I love how much Nina Turner terrifies them. Now, of course, money in politics, as we've talked about on the show, multiple times, I don't even know how many times, has an impact on how these elections turn out. But Nina Turner's ideology resonates with people, right? So she's not funded by corporate PAC, she's not taking these large donations. She's funded by small dollar donors. And what makes her so popular isn't the amount of money she's raised. It's the fact that she's representing and speaking to the actual issues that matter materially to people in that district. That's why she has such a commanding lead. And so corporate Democrats are gonna corporate Democrat, corporate lobbyists are gonna do what they do. They're gonna try to influence our political system at the end, the outcome of this election by pouring money toward the corporate candidate. But will it win out in the end? I would argue no, because in order to win, they would have to actually care about the issues that matter to people in that district. And they just don't, they don't. They, they fight back against domestic policies that would actually benefit these people's lives. So every other name, by the way, on this invite list was a corporate lobbyist or a corporate Democrat. For instance, Nicole Venable lobbies for Apple. Bayer, McDonald's, and Naviant. She also represents the Business Roundtable, a lobbying group for corporate CEOs and surveillance software company Planeteer. Jerome Murray, who's also on the invite list, lobbies for the American Investment Council, a trade group for the private equity industry. He also represents the Pharmaceutical Research and Manufacturers of America, as well as drug makers Pfizer, Amgen, and AbbVie individually. And then one more, one more, I can't help myself. Brandon Garrett lobbies for Walmart, American Airlines, FedEx, Nike, and the Managed Funds Association, a trade group for hedge funds. Dante Smalls is a lobbyist for UPS. So when we notice the similarities among corporate Democrats and corporate Republicans, there are differences. I don't wanna, you know, give a ridiculous, unnuanced explanation of what we're seeing in the country. There are differences between Democrats and Republicans. However, when we notice similarities in regard to their response to the economy or in regard to foreign policy, when we notice that our politics has devolved into nothing more than cults of personality and culture wars, the reason why that is 
is because both parties, both corporate, corporate wings of both parties are funded and lobbied by the same moneyed interests, period. They're paid to be the same on these incredibly important issues. They're not the same when it comes to other things, when it comes to their stance on important issues. I'm not trying to dismiss it. Important social issues, social justice issues, there's clearly a massive difference. But in terms of economic proposals, in terms of foreign policy, there's just too many similarities. That's why it doesn't matter if there's a Democratic president or a Republican president. Barack Obama was a continuation of Bush era foreign policies. Donald Trump was a continuation of Obama era foreign policies. Joe Biden has been a continuation of Trump era foreign policies. And it's a very similar, you know, it's very similar when it comes to economic policies. Although I think Democrats tend to pretend that they're gonna fight for redistribution of wealth. When in reality, they propose things and then hide behind conservative lawmakers and hide behind Republican obstruction to argue that they wanted it, they wanted better policies, they just couldn't do it. They just hide behind conservatives. When in reality, there's always a way to fight for what you want. I mean, you read about how LBJ, who had his own issues for sure, but when you read about how LBJ successfully used both carrots and sticks in order to get, you know, to, to pass important legislation in regard to civil rights. And you don't see the same kind of fight with the Democratic Party today, certainly not the corporate wing of the Democratic Party. And so I think our best bet is to empower and embolden progressive lawmakers, yes, members of the squad, but also to provide positive reinforcement to Nina Turner once she's elected. And I do believe that she'll be elected. But we also can't be afraid to criticize them when they're not wielding their power as a block. Because there are some instances in which they can withhold their votes as a block. Or they can you know, essentially do what we're seeing with conservative Democratic senators right now. People like Manchin and Cinema. Why do they get to? withhold their vote on democratic agenda policies. Whereas progressives in the House are expected to go along with whatever the Democratic Party wants, even if they pare back or pare down important policies like the infrastructure bill. So look, I think it's important for someone like Nina Turner to win that congressional seat. I think that it's important to also have both an electoral strategy but also keep in mind that electoral politics is not the end all be all. Because we need to find ways to empower Americans to be part of this system, to be part of the pressure campaigns that hold members of Congress accountable. We need to make it easier for workers to organize and to unionize so they have protection when they do general strikes. Because those strikes challenge capital, and when you challenge capital, that's when you can get things done. We're seeing it right now with the labor shortages. People don't want to go back to work. Why would they go back to work? They don't have childcare. They're not getting offered decent pay. But some companies have been pushed in the direction of actually increasing wages, and they haven't had much problems in terms of getting people back to work. That's what labor power is. So yes, it's important to have an electoral strategy, but we need labor power as well. I think that's an important part of this entire equation that oftentimes gets left out of the conversation. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.